You're watching DeckCast Live presented by Xfinity. And I'm your host, Jeff Cummings, with Olympian Caitlin Sandino. We're here at the Clovis North Aquatic Complex. This beautiful complex here on this high school campus. I wish I had a pool <laughs> like this when I, at my high school. Very impressive high school pool, most definitely. And already seen some fast swimming kicking off the 800s. Outside. Yeah, the 800s kicked it off, and I've kind of really feel bad for those swimmers last night because it was 105 degrees Fahrenheit here when they started swimming the 800s last night but you know these these athletes they they kind of know what to do and it's really important when you're out here in the heat to take care of yourself right because sometimes you you think you're okay you're yeah. drinking water right. you're in the pool you cool off but you know you just kind of have to overdo it it's no nothing wrong with over drinking water right and finding the shade and getting off your feet and i mean sunblock i know it sounds like so obvious but sometimes you know we think when we're racing we're thinking other things but they are keeping the pool temperature at a nice cold 79 mm -hmm. and I, I know you're itching to get in i, I want to get in the pool right yes. now and i never get in the pool <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's very it's, refreshing in there yeah it's going to be under 100 degrees today but again everybody's out in the sh we, we got nice shade here for everybody but um it's you know it, it's really interesting how this is the only tier meet that's been outdoors, mm -hmm. but this is good preparation because Nationals yes. and Palo Alto is going to be outdoors. Yes. So, so for those who are swimming at Nationals, they've got to kind of get used to this because, you know, you can't just assume that you know what you're doing. This is good prep for not just racing, but just how to take care of yourself throughout right. the meet. And it's a dry heat, which I prefer. And, mm -hmm. and me personally, I would rather be too hot than too cold. I don't know about you. Like I would be more inclined to get in for warm up. Like when you're freezing, you have that parker, you don't want to take it off. You don't want to warm up. It's hard to get the muscles going. So yeah. me personally, I am a SoCal girl, but I would rather be on the warm side. But I also, I've, I've had some pretty amazing meets in Clovis. So uh, I know we have yeah. a pretty cool we, story to we share. We actually kind of have a little dichotomy here about Clovis. Uh, you, we both went to the 1998 Nationals, which was at not Clovis North High School, Clovis West High School. And she had a great meet. It was your first international meet was the, the, my first, first meet that I qualified for my first international yeah. competition um, my parents just always recall how hot it was that they literally followed the timeline minute by minute they knew what race I was gonna be in they get out of the AC of the car watch me race go right <laughs> back to the car I remember the misters on the pool mm -hmm. deck but I have fond memories just because that kind of started my it did it started my international career and then it was bittersweet for you a little bittersweet well very bittersweet <laughs> for me it was actually my last competition as a professional swimmer at that meet I swam the I think it was the C final the hundred breast Stroke and I had some goals that I wanted to meet in order to, to feel like I could keep swimming to 2,000 right. trials. I didn't meet those goals and you know like ev most swimmers when they touch the wall they look around and whether they know it or not it's their last swim you kind of have this feeling of oh my, my career is over or even sometimes it's like oh thank god that's over I can get on with real life and I was kind of in between that I was like right. I'm so glad that you know I, I, I know what I'm going to be doing with my life because it was very up and down but to to actually this is what I did I went back to the hotel that night and I literally hung up my suit Aww. you know you talk about it, I, I'm hanging up my suit I literally <laughs> hung up my suit on the doorknob just to kind of <laughs> signify that that was really it and then a year later I, I got back in the pool as a master swimmer and I haven't Incredible. stopped that was 20 years ago can you believe it well, we also have a swimmer joining us today that probably has some pretty fond Clovis memories. Yes, <laughs> yes, and he has actually had some pretty fond memories of the past year. Justin Wright, who is the reigning national champion in the 200 Butterfly, which was one of the most exciting races from last year in Irvine. And there he is right there. He was the top qualifier, and he had a lot of competition. He had Jack Conger. Um, he had Chase Kalish, Tom Shields. There was so much competition, and you can see the, the, the stands were packed. It was for a that hot meet. one too at that it meet was, as well. It was <laughs> hot, but everybody wanted to come out and see their favorite Olympians, and and I think that they were really set up for this great race because really anybody could have won this race. I mean, we were. It was really interesting because. I, before the race, I thought, you know, with Justin being in lane four, I knew he had a good chance, but Jack Conger kind of took that race out really, really fast, which I kind of expected. And, and having watched Justin swim since high school, I knew that he was a back half swimmer. So him like hitting the wall at seventh or something at the hundred, I wasn't too <laughs> concerned. And then he just started inching his way up and up. And here we are at the last five meters. And there's Justin right there in the middle, getting that first national title. Being and a 200 butterfly myself, I appreciate the way he swims this race. I, you know, I was kind of in the same position, being a sixth or seventh place, and then taking off the end, and then you get to have a celebration like that, qualifying for, you know, a major meet and taking home the title in sunny Southern California. And today, here we are. And Justin. here's Justin Wright joining Welcome. us here. Glad to be here. So, uh, first of all, 
Happy belated birthday. You yes, just celebrated your 23rd birthday 10 days ago. Yep. I got to spend it in the airport. Oh, fabulous. Oh, of course. It's always a blast. <laughs> yeah. Where everybody wants to be on their birthday. Where were you coming right. or going from? Uh, I was just leaving the FINA Champions meet. Oh, um, yes. And somehow it took 40 hours to get from Indianapolis 40? back to Tucson. 40 hours. 40. Wow. 40. Wow. wow. Did you go yeah. to another country and then come back? Or? Well, might as well have. You know? <laughs> Could have come to China and back by then. You know? Oh, my goodness. Well, that's, I hope I hope 2024 is going to be a much better birthday for you. I hope so, too. Well, you can't celebrate too much next year because it'll be right before Olympic trials. you got to kind of that's, tone that's it true. down. It'll be just before. Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. okay. You'll have a lot of celebrating, we hope, after well, that. Let's hope so. <laughs> How does it feel to be back in Clovis? I know we're at your rival high school, though, right? That's Ooh. true, that's true. It, <laughs> it feels great to be back. And honestly, I have really fond memories of this school, um, Clovis North even. Uh, I went to high school at Clovis West, okay. and I was not even in Fresno when you guys had to meet there. <laughs> But that is actually really cool to have heard that story. Yeah. You um, probably weren't well, born yet. A lot of people forget <laughs> that Clovis West used to host some really high level meets and oh, have yeah. incredible swimmers mm -hmm. regularly. So, so when you found out that this meet was going to be the final stop on the Tier Pro Series, your team was already committed to it, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you're just extra excited to get over here and see your mom. You're staying with your mom while you're here, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm staying with my mom. Oh, that's amazing. I'm sure she's thrilled to have you back. Yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun already. <laughs> so we, Caitlin and I were talking about our experience of swimming here in our last time in Clovis. You've got some good memory swimming here at the Clovis North High School, don't you? Oh, definitely. Yeah, th this was where I had my first breakout swim back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to say it was uh, sectionals or something like that. Um, first time I hit a national cut and a junior cut, it was all in one race. Amazing. I think I had wow. the way one to of those do summers it. <laughs> where I dropped four seconds in one summer. Amazing. One yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I have tons of fond memories here and a lot of fast swimming. I have read that your brother's been pretty instrumental in your commitment to the 200 butterfly. And now do you love Definitely. him or hate him for that? I'm just kidding. I, you know, <laughs> it, it was one of those things I guess I kind of love him for it because yeah, it found course. my niche. Yeah. Um, but he does love to say he has one thing over me. I've beaten his times now. <laughs> but technically i've never beat him head to head oh and he loves to remind me of that one Ooh. i think Should you get we, him. Uh, give him a challenge right now oh yeah come back in the water carrie <laughs> yeah, yeah. we want to come back a brother showdown right out yeah. the two fly we can do any event let's do it <laughs> yeah. give it a shot i would love to see that, that i love I, I love watching the sibling rivalries yes. and they just it just makes things so much more intense <laughs> well it you know we're we already talked about your national title last year set you up to go to your first senior level international meet last mm -hmm. year at pan packs and now you're qualified to go to the world championships yep. in less than a month yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you're going to be going to Singapore for training camp and then getting ready for that. Yep, getting uh, ready to go. And obviously the preparation for this is a lot different than you did last year at Pan Packs. You mm -hmm. went almost straight from nationals over to Japan. A lot of people were, didn't swim as well as they wanted, probably you included, because mm -hmm. of that quick turnaround. Uh, so obviously I'm sure you feel a little bit better about having this longer preparation. Yeah, definitely. And it's the, the, the biggest difference is that last year my main focus was all right i'm gonna do the best i can at nationals that was my end but then it kept going and that's that's where it got a little bit harder um and i wasn't as prepared as i wanted to be for pan packs and it showed in my racing this time around i'm fully prepared for worlds and Great. we're geared up ready to go and hopefully get some fast swimming Amazing. You've had some teammates, Matt Grievers and Leah Smith, who have been to world championships. Have they given you kind of any tips on what to expect? Oh, yeah. They're always giving me tips and wisdom. Uh, <laughs> following Matt Grievers around anywhere, <laughs> you learn too many secrets about everywhere. Just back at FINA Champions meet out in uh, Indianapolis. I was following around the pool deck. You know, I'll, I'd swim there a couple times. And he... Uh, he was showing me all the shortcuts. He's like, don't go that way, man. That's, that's the long way. The Check way out this land. back way. Like, well, we're going through secret tunnels, getting through everywhere. The perks of traveling with Matt Grievers. Exactly. Yeah, he's the expert. And I always defer to him. Yeah, I think everybody wants to follow Matt Grievers around. <laughs> right. Does it? Yeah. Uh, so speaking of somebody else that, that uh, you're, you're – I see you on the deck with all the time, Zach Harding. You mm -hmm. two got to actually go way back. You guys were on the junior team together. Oh, yeah. And now you're going to World Championships together, 200 Butterfly. Yeah, it's I can't amazing. wait. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> I, I love swimming with him. I love racing with him. And I love being teammates with him. And uh, we got some footage of him last year when he got second in that 200 Butterfly. I mean, he was probably more excited than you were i think he even oh, did a absolutely. little i think he did a little backflip i if i recall <laughs> and i mean after 200 butterfly i don't know how you have the energy to do that uh, and then here he is on the award stand you know two of you are like yeah we got first and second and then bites his medal like most people try to do and then you get your medal and then he kind of 
upstages you a little bit here. We'll watch what happens. It kind of reaches down. What is that? The gas can. Do you know what, what that's all about? Uh, so something about a metaphor for uh, fueling up, getting uh, gassed up, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not you're not a wallflower. I've, I've seen you on deck cheering for your Arizona teammates. You're kind of like always out oh. there in front. Have you always been that way as a swimmer, like kind of that team cheerleader? Um, yeah, definitely. So uh, I guess the difference for me is I don't swim a lot of events. Um, so a lot of times I end up feeling like I'm not contributing as much as I could. Um, so the way I supplement that is... Uh -huh. As soon as I'm done swimming, done with my races, it's not about me, it's all about my team. I love that. And that was something I learned at University of Arizona, Amazing. and I've carried it forward all the way through to mm -hmm. now USA Swimming. So the moment I'm done swimming, you'll see me in the stands for every single session, every single race, and every single award ceremony. That is what it's about. I love that. My my mind was blown when we were talking a little off camera here, and we were talking about he wears glasses and what type of prescription, and um, he went four years four years without swimming in goggles like what? literally blows my mind but he has some severe damage because oh, of that yeah. you have to share this because to me i'm like i still can't get over this <laughs> well full story full so story. 11 years old um i was one of those kids that lost my goggles <laughs> almost no, every day we all do yeah. it, was, it was at least once a week i'd lose a pair of goggles my mom started getting fed up and she said all right justin this is the last pair i'm buying you and after this you're gonna have to pay for all these goggles on your own. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm 11. <laughs> this is gonna cut into my Dollar Tree Mom. candy budget. <laughs> She's serious though. So here, so my solution, just don't wear goggles. <laughs> so I didn't wear goggles for a very long time. I can't. <laughs> and, and eventually I did end up with some permanent scratches on my corneas, uh, which is a bummer. That's why you so see me squinting goggles. after the race because I can't wear contacts. So, so I go, <laughs> when I'm trying to look at my time on the board. Oh my Don't gosh. lose your goggles and wear your goggles. Yeah. That is the message that we take from here, kids. Exactly. <laughs> well, you would have been really, you would have been just in your element back in the 60s and 70s when they didn't even have goggles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They, they used to do it back Throw in the back. day. Well, yeah. well, why is it so surprising now? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those things we take for granted. Yeah. Definitely. Well, that's really cool. Well, definitely wear your goggles for world championships. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm that's sure you'll just, you. yeah, just listen to the listen to the announcer when you're done. I'm sure he'll be mentioning your name. Ooh. And hopefully you'll have. So. I hope you have a lot of celebrating and, and cheering. It's a, it's you know World Championships obviously is is a stepping to, stepping stone to next year. Mm -hmm. um, I know the training's been going really well. I've i you know I live in Tucson. I've seen you kind of cranking it out in the pool every day. Oh, yeah. um, have you already started thinking about trials, or are you firmly just settling in on South Korea? Well, um, uh, uh, I'd say we have been thinking about it. Um, me and my main coach Cliff. Right now we've been. Uh, we just finished uh, setting up our complete training schedule through Worlds, mm -hmm. and he brought up something he heard at the uh, national coaches, national team coaches convention, something like that, um, where he said, "All right, so here's the deal. I've learned we're not gonna aim to put you on the Olympic team. That's not our goal. We're not focusing on trials." We're focusing on getting you medals at mm. the Olympics. Wow. Okay. And so, you know, we've been thinking about it, and I'm sure right as as soon as Worlds is over, we'll set up a very detailed plan and get it started. I guess, yeah, you might as well just not go for one step. Yep. You go three steps ahead. Think exactly. three steps ahead. Exactly. Aim ahead, and even if you fall short, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. That's a good <laughs> philosophy. I really, I really kind of like that. It's, it's yep. interesting how you think about that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be fun watching you here. You're in the final tonight of the 100 Butterfly. I know the 200 Butterfly is your main event. You got a lot of competition there, but that's going to be fun. And the home crowd's going to be really yes. cheering for you. I'm sure that's oh, going to help. I hope so. They better be loud. Yeah. <laughs> your mom's probably going to be the loudest. Uh, yeah. Oh, she will be. <laughs> that's going to be fun. So look for Justin tonight in that 100 Butterfly. It's going to be a good race. It's going to be great. John Luca Orlando, Giles mm -hmm. Smith, and Justin likes to back half and he's going to come home on these sprinters and it's going to be fun to watch. So be sure to watch for that. And and uh, Justin's part of the Beisel squad in terms of the swim squads. He's going to be definitely trying to give the Beisel squads the points leading into the conclusion here of the FINA swim, uh, the tier pro swim series. And look at that. Camille Adams has a big lead. 40, what is that? 43 points over Beisel. And but right behind in second is Connor Yeager. <laughs> Justin, I think you can do it. I think you can give 30 points. You just swim a lot more <laughs> events. That's all you need to do. Yeah, yeah, just add some events. Yeah, yeah. We'll, do that. we'll do that. So definitely want to be keep an eye out for this. The winner of the swim squads gets a $10,000 check to the charity of your choice. And I know, Caitlin, you'll be very happy I if the am. Adam squad does 
win this because they give um, they give a special uh, they give that bonus to the Jesse Reese Foundation, which I'm so thrilled and excited. Um, that's who I've been the national spokesperson for, for gosh, since t- uh, 2012, 11. And I was so honored when Camille said that she was going to play for the Jesse Reese Foundation, or also known as Niku. That's who I represented last year for the swim squads as well. I didn't win, but hopefully Camille can. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, that would be great. The, and, and even if she doesn't win, the exposure the out yes, there for 100%. the Jesse Reese Foundation, never ever give up, has been key throughout these past, Definitely. what has it been? Oh my gosh, six months of the Tier Pro Swim. Yeah. Yes, so it, it really does help that. So um, Caitlin will be cheering for the Adam <laughs> squad. We'll be cheering for all the squads. We just love a race down to the yeah. finish. So uh, it's going to be really cool. So uh, another thing that's really important is the USA Swimming Foundation, which I believe uh, Beisel is representing. Yes. And Very so, uh, you know, saving lives, building champions mm-hmm. is their motto. And Simone Manuel is one of their biggest ambassadors of that. Take a look at this. Hey, mom and dad. There's a way to let your kids have fun. And learn a skill that could save their life. Swim lessons, woo! Sadly, drowning takes too many young lives, but it's preventable, and studies show that lessons reduce that risk by 88%. So go to usaswimmingfoundation.org and enroll your child today. I learned how to swim. The USA Swimming Foundation, saving lives and building champions. And we're back here at the Clovis North High School for the final stop of the Tier Pro Swim Series. And look at that schedule for tonight. It's going to be really exciting. So we mentioned that 100 Butterfly Men's is going to be one of the top races. I'm excited about the women's and men's 200 freestyles. We got um, Olympic Olympians, Olympic gold medalists actually highlighting that. We got Leah Smith in the women's mm-hmm. 200 free. And we got Townley Haas in the men's 200 free. Mm-hmm. Those two are going to be really good. They're going to Worlds. Yep. And so this is their last, bit, mm-hmm. last big chance to get in some good racing. And we also got the 100 Breast the 50 back and Caitlin's favorite, favorite race the, the 400 I am <laughs> I heard there's an empty lane I was like um mm, no <laughs> the Caitlin jump in yeah that, that would not be pretty folks <laughs> yeah maybe if it were a hundred I am it would be kind of cool so a lot of a lot of great races tonight yes. but Caitlin I've still you know I've been thinking about this is the last stop of the tier pro swim mm-hmm. series and I've been thinking back on the previous ones of this year and there have been so many great races and to try to pick what the best race of the year in the Pro oh, Swim Series is, really tough. <laughs> and so we're going to ask your help to pick out what the best male and female races are. And here's who we down picked down yeah. for the two top nominees for the male race of the year. We got Caleb Dressel in that come from behind victory in the 100 Butterfly in Des Moines. And then Cody Miller in that really great comeback swim in the 100 Breaststroke in Bloomington. Let's take a look at Cody's swim in the 100 because it really was his comeback swim. He had been injured last year. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't get to make the world team. He's going to Pan Am's and Mm -hmm. he tapered a little bit to swim in his home pool just to see what he could do. And there he is on the left, Michael Andrew on the right. And Cody was on a mission and usually Michael is one who is pretty much unstoppable the first 50, but Cody took it out hard. And here we are, the final five meters, Cody pulled away from Michael and got into the wall with 59.2, which is the best time that um, Cody has done since the Olympics, I believe. And I think he's got to be really, really happy with that. As you can see, the reaction is good. Yes. I think he's going to do even better at the Pan American Games in Peru. Were you surprised to see him drop down a 59 right there? Well, I knew he was going to be tapered, so I knew he'd go under a minute. Okay. I didn't think he was going to get that far under. It was pretty impressive. It was very <laughs> impressive, a little bit surprising. But we saw that prelims when he did when he went 59.9. So I was like, yeah, right. it looks so great. So, I, you know, I was really happy about that. And then also he did a great 200 breaststroke. So those are your two nominees, Caleb's 100 fly and Cody's 100 breast. And let's talk about the female races of the yes, year because the these women were are two up some great good ones. too. They were hard to pick between, but when we narrowed it down, we thought Annie Laser's breaststroke, the 200 breaststroke in Bloomington, was just so impressive. You know, we we're kind of making a joke of, you know, she puts up this time and then Cody comes up and these strong breaststrokers at Indiana right now. And then we were both so impressed with Reagan Smith, her 200 backstroke again at Bloomington. Um, she's just been on fire lately. So let's see what the fans have to say. What do you guys think? So you want to make sure that you vote on usasomina.org yes. and we'll uh, kind of highlight these races throughout this weekend in Clovis and on the final day we'll see what the fans We'll select. see what the fans think and really I, you know whoever loses <laughs> 
it's an honor to be nominated because that means you're swimming really fast. You and really there were are. a lot of other great swims that I, I, ha I actually wrote down a list and I was thinking, I, I should have mentioned those, but we only had <laughs> to many. do two. It was too many. And I just, I, I'm really stuck on the way Caleb swam that 100 yes. fly in Des Moines. It was, I think it was his first real meet since uh, Pan Pax. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was looking to see what he'd the do. The fans wanted to see him. Yep. Yeah. And then Cody was, you know, he has so many fans around the country <laughs> yeah, that I think everybody was happy about that. And like you said, Annie and Reagan are just having breakout years. So. Definitely. it's it's hard to pick but we hope you can pick and then on Saturday after Saturday at, at finals we're gonna tell you who won they don't get any kind of money prize or any pride. any kind of prize they pride. just it's the pride of saying you guys picked them as the best race of the year all right so that's gonna do it for today's show yes. we're gonna be back tonight and we hope you will join us after the a and B finals we're gonna be here with Justin Re or actually not just oh, rest Amy, Amy, Amy Bilquis not sorry so about that yes Amy Bilquis yeah she's been impressive individual yeah she in the made a big out. move to uh, back to her home in Scottsdale we're going to talk mm -hmm. to her about that and her great uh, performances at, at Cal and yeah. moving forward into the 2020 Olympic trial so you definitely don't want to miss that and you want to see all the races tonight on NBCSN Jason Knapp and Rowdy Gaines will be calling all those races and then after that head over to USAswimming.org we're going to be here for Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity so thanks everybody for watching and we will see you tonight.